In general, both the death sentencing rate and the death row population remain very small for women in comparison to that for men. Actual execution of female offenders is quite rare, with only 576 documented instances as of December 31, 2022, beginning with the first in 1632. These executions constitute about 3.6% of the total of 16,047 confirmed executions in the United States including the colonies between 1608 and 2022. It's believed that women make up less than 5% of the world's total death row population, with approximately 800 women currently on death row. In 2020, at least seven countries sentenced women to death and at least 16 women were executed. However, the exact data is difficult to ascertain as countries such as North Korea, China and Vietnam continue to keep their death penalty data a state secret. Looking at women on death row in the United States, the number of death row inmates fluctuates daily with new convictions, appellate decisions overturning conviction or sentence alone, commutations, or deaths. Due to this fluctuation as well as lag and inconsistencies in inmate reporting procedures across jurisdictions, the time on death row counter starts on the day they were first placed on death row. It does not count time incarcerated prior to sentencing nor does it discount time spent in prison off death row in cases where death sentences were overturned before being reinstated. As of January 2023 there are 51 women on death row in the United States. Seven women out of the 51 are at Texas death row awaiting execution. There are seven women on death row in Texas. Three of them have been there more than ten years. Their cases are still on appeal, but the avenues of appeal are closing one by one. Although it is impossible to say exactly when, it is probable that before long an execution date will be set for one of the women. And the question is, then what? The laws in Texas concerning capital punishment do not mention gender at all. Only murder is a capital crime, and then, only murder in certain circumstances. These are their names, and the crimes they are convicted of. Kimberly Cargill Kimberly was convicted in 2012 of killing the babysitter she hired to watch her children in 2010. The victim, Cherry Walker, was developmentally disabled. Cargill had previously faced investigations regarding child abuse, and she'd already lost custody of one of her children. Cargill's intention was apparently to prevent Walker from testifying against her in court. In 2017, the U.S. Supreme Court denied Cargill's appeal. At this time, Cargill does not have a set execution date. Many family members testified against Cargill. Three of Cargill's four sons testified that Cargill would frequently choke, kick and hit them and that she changed the locks on their bedroom doors so she could lock them inside. Cargill's ex-husbands also took the stand, one of whom testified that Cargill set his apartment on fire. In 2017, Cargill's petition to the United States Supreme Court for a writ of certiorari was denied. As of February 2023, she has spent more than 10 years, 7 months on death row. Darlie Rowley Rowdier was convicted in the 1996 stabbing of her two young sons, Damon and Devon. Rowdier herself sustained a number of wounds. She maintains the attack was by an intruder. The prosecutor maintains Rowdier's wounds were self-inflicted and she was the perpetrator. 
Rowdier's infant son and her husband were asleep upstairs and were unharmed. Darley has maintained her innocence in the deaths of her two sons, Damon and Devon, for more than 20 years. Darley was convicted of stabbing and killing the boys, who were five and six years old as her husband and infant son slept. She was accused of doing so because her family was facing some financial difficulties. One of the nails in the coffin of Darley's 1997 case is a video of Darley spraying silly string and giggling at the grave of her young sons. Family members of Darley who support her say that this was all part of a birthday celebration for one of the boys and should not have been used as evidence. They say the video did not capture the prayers and tears the family shared over the graves. Right now, Darley does not have an execution date. She maintains that an intruder killed her sons. Rowdier's conviction has come into question in recent years. She was convicted largely on the basis of the testimony of bloodstain analyst Tom Bevel who has played a role in several recently discovered wrongful convictions. Other crime scene experts have publicly criticized the case against Routier and one juror has publicly stated that he now believes she is innocent. Routier is collecting funds to perform new DNA testing on evidence at the crime scene and wrongful conviction advocacy group investigating innocence has taken her case. David Cam, who himself was wrongfully convicted on the basis of Bevel's testimony, is investigating her case. In 2004, Rowdier's petition to the United States Supreme Court for a writ of certiorari was denied. Darley has spent more than 26 years on death row, Texas. Melissa Lucio Melissa Lucio is convicted of abusing and killing her two-year-old daughter, Mariah Alvarez, who was discovered by emergency personnel in 2007. Lucio had nine children and claimed the young girl had fallen downstairs. Investigators found this was not the case based on the injuries the young girl had endured. In 2011, the state upheld Lucio's death sentence. In 2012, Caro's petition to the United States Supreme Court for a writ of certiorari was denied. Texas's highest criminal court on April 25, 2022, delayed the execution of Lucio, the only Latina on the state's death row, who was set to die April 27, 2022. She has been on death row for more than 14 years. Linda Carty. Linda was sentenced to death in 2001 after planning and implementing the murder of her 20-year-old neighbor, Joanna Rodriguez. Carty intended to murder the woman and take her baby in the hopes it would benefit her relationship. She was sentenced to death in 2002. In 2018, the Supreme Court turned down Carty's appeal. Cardi maintains her innocence and says she was framed by those who carried out the murder and attacks on others in the home. Cardi claims she was framed by drug dealers in response to her work as an informant and has appealed her conviction. Her appeals have been unsuccessful and the appeal procedure has been exhausted. Barring the granting of clemency. She stands to become the first female British national to be executed since Ruth Ellis in 1955, and the first British black woman executed in more than a century. In 2014, key witnesses against her, including a DEA agent for whom she worked as an informant, recanted and claimed they were coerced into testifying against her by the prosecutor. Retired DEA Special Agent Charles Mathis accused Prosecutor Connie Spence with threatening to allege in court that he had had an affair with Carty. Mathis denies the affair, but was concerned the effect it would have on his career. 
two of Cardi's co-defendants accuse prosecutors of threatening them with a death sentence and of feeding them stories implicating Cardi. Linda Cardi has spent more than 20 years on death row. Erica Shepard Erica, 19 years old, and James Dickerson were convicted of robbing and murdering Marilyn Marr as she walked to her apartment from her vehicle. They brutally killed her inside her apartment to get her car keys. They had been scoping out the apartment complex in the hopes of finding somebody to steal a car from. In 1996, Shepard was sentenced to death. Dickerson died while awaiting his execution. Claims she was present for the crime, but was not an active participant. In 2014, Shepard's petition to the United States Supreme Court for a writ of certiorari was denied. In 2020, her final petition for certiorari was denied. Brittany Holberg Brittany Holberg was convicted of murdering an 80-year-old man she robbed at his home. The man had hired Holberg as a sex worker and taken her to his home. There, she brutally attacked him with several weapons. Holberg was working as a prostitute and was hired by Towery. During the trial, Defense attorney Catherine Brown Dodson argued that Towery was wrongly portrayed as an innocent elderly man, and that Holberg acted in self-defense when Towery attacked her. Dodson said A.B. Towery became angry and violent when he found a crack pipe on Holberg. She told the jury that Towery struck Holberg twice in the head with a metal pan while her back was turned and then threatened her with a knife. Holberg reacted by stabbing him with her own knife, and the fight escalated until Holberg put the lamppost in his mouth to attempt to end the struggle. Holberg believed she would have little legal recourse because of her status as a drug-abusing prostitute and fled to Tennessee. Testimony showed that A.B. Towery, the victim, also had a problem with drugs. Since her conviction, Holberg has spoken out about the death penalty, has talked of abuse in the Texas criminal justice system, and has called for better conditions for prisoners. In 2001, Holberg's petition to the United States Supreme Court for a writ of certiorari was denied. Brittany Holberg has spent more than 24 years on death row. Taylor Renee Parker. Parker was convicted for the October 2020 slaying of her pregnant friend Reagan Simmons Hancock and her unborn daughter Braxlyn Sage Hancock. Parker stabbed Simmons Hancock over 100 times in the victim's house before she cut open her womb to steal the unborn child. Prosecutors believed the motive was that the defendant murdered the victim to steal her baby as an elaborate plan for the defendant to keep her boyfriend after she lied about being pregnant herself. As of February 2023, Taylor Renee Parker just spent two months and some days on Death Row, Texas. Thank you for watching Death Row.